okay uh, welcome everyone good morning hope it, hope that you're doing well and uh, that whatever you learned yesterday was um, uh, you know refreshing and strengthening about the tabernacle of david so today again you know we have uh, something very special to study mm, we will pray and then we'll uh, get started but before that i just wanted to check did your previous class get over a little late no no pastor it uh, actually oh. uh, we didn't have the last hour because um, oh, okay the portion. <laughs> i see i see okay okay, okay. understood yeah yeah because uh, people are still joining so that's what i thought anyway we'll go ahead we'll we'll pray and we'll get started so yeah uh, could could someone please lead in prayer Okay, as uh, Zeli. Father, we want to thank you for this time. Go ahead, go ahead, John. Uh, sure, sure. Okay. We pray, God, that you would open the eyes of our understanding and we would be able to understand more of your word this morning, oh God, especially help us to understand regarding prayer and to apply this in our lives, oh God. We thank you that you are leading us in a special way. We give you praise in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, John. Yeah, so, excuse me. So today we are going to um, focus in on praying for revival. Okay, how to pray for revival. Um, revival, if you look at church history, that's it. yeah, you would find a common thread you know running through all the revivals and that common thread would be prayer okay people made time for prayer people invested in prayer people sought god with all their hearts with all their being and people cried out to god uh, and as a result of that we see a great work of god you know what is revival revival is um moments in time when we have seen a mighty move of God. Okay? It's a mighty move of God in terms of people coming into the kingdom, in terms of the Holy Spirit working in people's hearts, in terms of the manifestation of the supernatural, the manifestation of the power of God, uh, the display of God's glory, that people are getting healed, people are getting delivered from uh, demonic powers, there is a city transformation taking place. So, you know, in, in that moment in time, you, or, or that period in time, you see a, a work of God unlike any other. Uh, and, you know, if you just, I, I'm giving you a few things about revival, but there is so much more. And it's a refreshing, you know, from God's presence that God brings in uh, and he uh, shows us his glory. So many a time, you know, people refer to the book of Acts as uh, a period of revival. You know how uh, people stepped out and uh, ministry was happening, regions were being won for God and God's power was being demonstrated. Uh, it, it, was, it was an exciting time. It was an exciting time. It was spread over about uh, three decades. But you see God's glory in a different way, in a powerful way. Okay, So that is revival. So when we are crying out to God for revival, what we are saying is, God, you visit us in a new way in a fresh way, in a powerful way, so that we, we will be revived, we will be strengthened even more, uh, you know, in you, and we will, we will see you, right, for, for your, your power and your glory. And each revival, you know, it displays God, uh, it displays the glory of God in a magnificent way. And that's what we want to see, we want to experience. So uh, there are people uh, in history, who have cried out to God and said, God, you visit us, you come powerfully in our midst, you do your work powerfully, and God has done it. Now, Charles Finney made the statement, which is in our notes here. I am in page uh, 80, uh, page 90, uh, chapter number 22. So the statement says, revival 
comes from heaven when heroic souls enter the conflict determined to win or die or if need be to win and die the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force so no he is talking about the determination and the commitment that one needs to pray till something happens you know pray till uh, you see that change happening around you pray till you experience the power of god manifesting around you so we need to press in we need to push in and prayer is really the key to revival and anyone would agree you know, whoever studied revivals will agree that there was somebody who was praying there was a community of people standing on the word of god so how can one pray for revival you know, praying for revival is based on god's word you know the promises in god's word that we can take and we can ask okay god you have you, this is what you have uh, spoken and we want that to come to pass so we can pray for revival in that manner we can also pray for revival being led by the holy spirit now holy spirit obviously will only speak in line with god has what god has already spoken in his word so 1 john 5 7 it says that the spirit and the word agree so there will be no disagreement the holy spirit leads us okay to pray for certain things and when we uh, are led in both ways by the word and the spirit we are able to call upon the lord and we are able to uh, press into this revival that we are talking about so you know there are so many revivals i think uh, yesterday we uh, looked at the moravian i told you the moravian prayer movement but it's also called as a revival so what is the precursor to that you had people praying for 24 hours for several years and we have talked about the welch revival of evan roberts and i told you you know uh, uh, evan roberts prayed okay and uh, communities of people actually prayed so uh, it's like that you when you study different revival revivals okay azusa street some people uh, talk about that 1905 william j c more and when you when you see what they were doing they were praying and in fact one man william j c more apparently he prayed for many hours he prayed in tongues and even after the revival broke out they say that uh, he would wait in the room where people would gather and he would be praying and he didn't want anybody to disturb him or him to disturb anybody so it seems he used to put like a carton you have those carton boxes right he'll put that on his head and he'll be praying you so you can see a man who has put the carton box on his head and what is he doing inside he's praying he's praying in the spirit he's praying 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 and he would only come and speak to the people when he sense the holy spirit move him to speak otherwise the whole time he would be praying okay so i'm i'm just giving you a glimpse of this connection between prayer and revival so you talk about different revivals and you will see that there were people who were you know crying out to god layman's revival you know that's another revival where you had people during lunch break they decided that they are not they are going to spend that time to pray so wherever they were you know, they would just gather uh, and this was started by uh, i mean i i don't remember the details now but you can look it up it's there i think it's all there in the book publication called revivals visitations and moves of god so a, a person decided that he will print flyers and in that flyer he had invited people okay every day during lunch time can you just gather and pray that's all so it went around these flyers went around and people actually took it seriously and they started gathering for prayer during lunch time okay so you know for in initially a few people gather tens twenties hundreds thousands and it just started the the in the during lunch time chapels and churches started getting filled okay and a mighty revival took place you know even the even the press started covering it so it became that huge because somebody initiated prayer and said can we all just spend a little bit of time you know praying uh, during lunch break and you know it led into a revival so prayer is the key if you want to see a move of god uh sure shot way 
seek the Lord through prayer. And that's what we have seen even in church history. Again, many, many revivals. You can look at somebody, somebody's name. Uh, we talked about Charles Finney, right? And we said Father Nash. Remember, his ministry, his uh, preaching was so effective because you had that Father Nash and his team okay, investing time in prayer. So if we want a revival, it's actually quite simple. We have to connect to God. We have to seek Him. We have to spend that time with Him okay, uh, and pray. Okay, And uh, we really never know you know, how God begins to move when one is willing to do that. So prayer, 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 you know, you can't, you can't overemphasize it. It is that important. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, today, just imagine if uh, local churches make that time for prayer. Uh, and even, uh, let's say, if, if you can't gather as a local church, even a small team of people, you gather together and start praying, you know, surely, we can all move in the direction of a mighty revival or a move of God. So when we pray for revival, what are all the, the aspects that we must focus on? That is what we are going to look at today. There are a couple of points uh, that I will touch on. To be exact, uh, there are five points. Okay, So we will go through each one of them. So the first one, is that we must pray prayers of repentance, of consecration, yielding and surrender to God. So uh, usually when you, when you study about people who've prayed for revival, you know, you find those who were, you know, very honest with God and also to the point where they said, God, if you want to change something in me, you change it. Okay. If uh, like uh, bend me, mold me, make me, I I just come before you and I dedicate myself to you. And also people have prayed and, and said that, you know, God, we repent. We repent. You know, come cleanse us, do a deep work in our lives. So inviting God uh, with repentance, that's also something that we have seen people do. If you look at the book of Jonah, right? When people repented, what happened? God's forgiveness came. God's working in their lives manifested. So to pray for revival, this can be a starting point. We can ask God for um, forgiveness. We can ask God to change us. You know, if there are things in our lives, you know, there can be um, weights or the Bible calls weights. Uh, things that interfere, you know, in our race, uh, uh, this faith race, faith journey, there can be sins. Okay, uh, so there's a cleansing that we are asking God for. We are saying, God, whatever standards we've had till now, we want you to up it. Okay, so we we pray for forgiveness, Lord. If there are things in us which are not right in your sight, then you please forgive us and help us to change. Uh, the good example, again, is that same Evan Roberts. You know, in their language, the Welsh language, they would say, uh, bend me. Okay, bend me was the term uh, which in this revival became very, very popular. You know, people started using that term. It was introduced by a person... Uh, by a person called Seth Joshua. Okay, Seth Joshua first said, Lord, bend me. And Evan Roberts caught on to that. So the prayer of the Welsh revival was, Lord, bend me, meaning I repent. I commit myself to you. I surrender. You know, I'm ready, Lord, for if you want to change something in me, change. Okay, um, uh, the, the sins in my life, the burdens in my life, the weights in my life, you know, I'm letting go. You know, it's like the heart of David. Remember, David came before the Lord and he had this prayer in Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. He said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So, He's coming open before the Lord, willing to repent, 
you know of his sins uh, and we know the context some of the other psalms of repentance also that he wrote okay sorry everyone there was some interruption in the uh, connection so anyway i'm back so i was saying that we are repenting right we are repenting before the lord we can also say that you know god we are setting all our affections on you maybe there are some ungodly affections okay which we have they can be our affection for um self they can be our affection for you know certain worldly achievements uh, where we have selfish ambition they can be our affection for uh, the praise of people okay so sometimes even without our knowledge all of these things are a part of our lives but when we truly come before the lord and we are seeking a revival from god we need to be in a place of repentance we need to be in a place where we are saying god everything i give to you and you do something like evan roberts prayed you know in that welsh language bend me means lord you break me you make me whatever you want you please do it okay and that becomes the real cry for revival so when we are praying for revival you know we need to have our hearts so open before the lord where we are saying god our current standards we may think that hey my christian life is i am just living the the life the christian life but we still go before the lord and say god bring me higher oh god bring me higher you know i am sorry for uh, the things which are not right in my life in my heart in my family in my community in my church and in fact this repentance can extend uh, over the city as well over the nation as well where we repent before god not just for our sins but also for the sins of the people okay in our land and that's how we are inviting the working of god in our midst so when we pray for revival it's good to go humbly okay before the throne of god's grace uh, and say god we are like an open book you do whatever you want to do lord you do that in us okay so that is the the main way in which one can pray for revival second we can pray and ask for more of god we can ask for a greater outpouring of the holy spirit so when we say more of god uh, you know uh, in in the in the psalms it says like my uh, as the deer pants for brooks of water you know i i pant for you oh god so there is a longing in our spirit for god which only god can satisfy so when we are asking god for a revival we are asking him to visit us in a strong way okay because our affection is set on god and what we are saying is we are saying god only you will satisfy 
nothing else is going to be sufficient nothing else is going to be enough for us so we want more of you we want more of you and to have more of god you know what is a requirement within us we need a hunger here we need a thirst for the lord so as god's people just imagine you know uh, as individuals you know we are living our lives uh, and we are saying that uh, i'm okay you know in my christian life i don't really have to grow any more or i don't really have to experience anything more from god you know that itself shows that we are stunted but the healthy way to live the christian life is at every given point we have to say god i am hungry teach me something new do something new in my life you know help me lord to to see your glory in a new way so what is that that is carrying the hunger of god when people don't have hunger very soon we can expect you know whatever working of the spirit is there it will come to an end it will come to a stop you know stand still because god can no longer work in the lives of people who are not hungry for him but it is when churches are hungry okay so i want to really encourage you to go read those revival stories you would find that people were crying out you know, people were calling out to god there is one more uh, um, chapter we will do in in this in this uh, course um, there is the example of a lady called pandita uh, ramabai from india okay and she worked among children and we will study how these children were crying out for the outpouring of the holy spirit they were asking god god pour out your holy spirit pour out your holy spirit so they had that hunger okay and for us to receive a revival we need to be hungry you know anyone who goes before god and says i already have but if you want you give you know that attitude will not work for revival every revival that we study about people were hungry and how beautiful isn't it if we have uh, uh, people in our churches people in our community saying hey we want to see more of god's working in our midst so hunger is very important that need for more of god is very important we need to be excited okay uh, more revelation from uh, god's word you know uh, more of the outpouring of the holy spirit more of the gifts of the spirit more of the manifestations of god's power whether it is healing whether it is uh, you know some miracles whether it is you know something supernatural that god is doing among us so we're always hungry wow you know what is the next uh, service going to look like what is the next class going to look like god what are you doing so that is a healthy believer that is a believer who is prepped for revival okay uh, and so in our prayers this is what we are asking god for god give me a greater hunger for you give me more of you let there be a greater outpouring of the holy spirit now we know that you know praying for more of the holy spirit that is so scriptural uh, in in the book of acts on the day of pentecost the holy spirit was already poured out but you know uh, god has promised this for all his children for all his sons and daughters so today we can ask god keep pouring out the holy spirit and keep releasing oh god those dreams those visions uh, you know that prophecy and that tongues and everything lord that you have uh, through the working of your spirit in our midst so God also promised in his word in Zechariah 10:1 says the uh, latter rain will be greater than the former so the early outpouring of the holy spirit that was mighty enough but what is the promise of god god said in the last days the way i'm going to pour out my spirit it will be much greater and that is why today if we say okay god we want a greater outpouring of the holy spirit it is very much in line with scripture and we can ask god for that and when we do that you know god is a god who is faithful he will pour out that increasing measure of the rain of the holy spirit on us okay uh, and uh, people who have prayed in this way and who have experienced the working of the spirit even today you know we can hear of churches around the world some of them giving testimonies 
uh, of what happened when they prayed for uh, more of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So uh, all these things should really inspire us and help us realize that uh, we too can experience these things. All right. So first we said repentance. So coming with an open heart, uh, letting God work in our lives. You know, that is our approach in prayer. Second, we are asking for more of God. So we become hungry, you know, genuinely hungry for more of God, more of the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Then we are asking for the manifestation of the glory and the power of God in our midst. Okay. So what is the glory and the power of God? The glory of God, we can study it in many ways. Okay. The glory of God, uh, uh, in the Old Testament, you would find that you could see the presence of God. You could experience the presence of God. You know, the glory of God would come like a cloud. It would uh, appear as fire. Okay, so all that was the glory of God. And later on, when Jesus came to the earth, we saw that he manifested his glory. For the first time, you read that when he turned water into wine, when he did a miracle, the glory of God was manifested. So Jesus manifested the sonship glory through a miracle. And then through his entire lifetime, he was doing miracles. He was doing supernatural works. So he was manifesting his glory in at manner and he told that you know we who are believers we will do greater works than him so today you know when we're talking about the glory of god the you know, glory of god will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea it is who god is and what god does you know, coming through in and through our lives okay so by that we mean that in our churches, you know, we're experiencing the presence of God in a mighty way. We're experiencing the works of God, you know, the way Jesus did all those mighty works, those works of God are there in our midst. Okay, and talk about the nature of God. You know, we say God is justice, God is love, God is mercy, God is grace, you know, God is truth. So the manifestation of everything that God is, is seen in the church. It is seen in the body of believers. It is seen in a particular believer. That is the glory of God, which we are talking about. So we want God to be revealed. Basically, that's what it is. For who he is. Okay, Through the works that he does. That is the glory of God. So we are crying out to God and we are saying, God, we want a manifestation of God of your glory. We want people to see who you are. You know, in the book of Acts, when Peter and John, they were threatened. They said, hey, uh, the authorities told them, don't ever go and minister in the name of Jesus again. So they come back. They tell the other believers, this is what has happened. We have been warned. But when the believers hear this, they pray together to God and they say, God, you know, because of these threatenings, we don't want to stop the work, but give us more boldness so that we can continue the work and then they also pray and ask god for let more so that these people will realize asked for the manifestation of the glory of god and that's where you know God is able to work. So as God's children today, you know, uh, in addition to whatever else we have said, let us pray for the manifestation of the glory and the power of God. You know, we want to see the power of God. Just imagine we go to church, okay, but we don't experience God working in our hearts or in our lives, not through the presence, not through the gifts of the spirit or not through, uh, you know, the breakthroughs, the miracles and all that he's releasing. We just go to church and we come back. You know, that will be so um, uh, incomplete, isn't it? But what is God's promise? He wants to fill his temple with his glory. He wants to fill his house with his glory. 
so when we are praying for revival that's what we are saying god we no longer want you know dead services dead churches dead gatherings you know dead activities something we do because ha huh, we need to do these things but lord we want your glory you manifest yourself if you are there that is what makes the difference so we begin to pray in this way we become hungry god every time we want to see you we want to see your glory maybe one time we experience the peace of god right and that is that is his glory presenting itself in that way we get healed that is god's glory presenting it in that way maybe we go with a confusion and god gives us you know uh, an idea some wisdom comes to us god's glory is being manifest so we are encountering the glory of god in different ways and we want more of that okay so when we pray for revival that's what we should say god manifest your glory oh god manifest your power we should not be um, you know a, a dead set of people doing uh, you know sort of uh, just rituals and traditionally coming together but we really really need you so when we pray for revival that's what we are asking for okay and uh, again you know you could just look at the revival stories and there you will see you know there were times when god's glory manifested in amazing ways um uh, and uh, also the way uh, for example uh, the azusa street street revival in that revival there is this uh, incident where when people were praying okay people were praying and of course there were a lot of healings that took place and uh, very uh, remarkable ones you know things like uh, somebody's ear uh, got injured and immediately when some uh, someone prayed for it the the ear got healed in front of everybody's eyes you know the bleeding and the injury and all just disappeared so crazy crazy stuff happened but when the people were praying apparently in that building um, uh people who were walking outside they could see fire and somebody even called up the uh you know the what do you call that thing the fire truck the fire engine and uh, they came to put off the fire but when they actually came there they found that there was no fire but people could see the the building burning but what was that it was the manifestation of the glory of god god was working in their midst by the you know by by his glory uh, and uh, you know all these amazing stories that you read uh, about revival and it really inspires you not that god is going to work the same way you know maybe we won't see any manifestation of cloud or fire or heat or cold maybe not that way maybe in some other way right but we are open god whichever way you're going to manifest your glory you please come and we need to experience uh, your working in our midst so we cry out for the glory of god and when we pray for revival you know we've always seen that when god is doing something in the midst of his people and uh, you know he's revealing himself to his people in a powerful way it touches the lives of those who don't know him okay so in many revivals you would read that um, a lot of people you know thousands of people accepted christ thousands of people uh, came into the Uh, kingdom of god uh, everything you know welsh revival there is a number attached to that how many thousands of people accepted christ layman's revival so many thousand people accepted so you see that the lost come into the kingdom and so when we pray for a revival we can also pray god you those who don't know you lord we pray that in a in a quick way in a speedy way lord that you will draw these people to yourself we know you know jesus um said that the holy spirit will convict them and then uh, you know the, the the father will draw them to himself so we can pray everything we have learned about those who are lost you know bringing them into the kingdom we begin to pray those prayers okay when we pray for revival and surely a lot of people will come into the kingdom of god and i think i told you right in the welsh revival they had um uh people who used to cuss they stopped cussing people who uh, the crime rate was very high and they actually figured out that the crime rate had become less because people were getting saved people were coming into the kingdom they were understanding that we have to live by the nature of god and not do all these sinful things so 
people getting saved in revivals you know that that is something very common and we must pray that uh, god will do that work of great harvest mighty harvest in a time of revival generally you know there's a mighty harvest people get saved quickly so we need to pray lord let there be a revival so that many will accept you and then you know the fifth point here is to pray for transformation of the community and yes you know i have been uh, sharing bits and pieces with you about different communities so god can also uh, do a deep work remember when we talked about the moravian revival what was their issue what was their uh, uh, sin in other words division strife okay uh, competition but when god began to work in their midst how did the prayer movement start through unity and then the unity stayed after the unity stayed we saw what a missionary zeal you know uh, arose from the the uh, prayer movement of the moravians so in that way whatever a community needs for transformation maybe you know we've talked about this when we uh, uh, talked about praying for the city maybe we want crime rate to go down maybe we want um, uh, you know justice we want protection we want righteousness but god is able to do all of that you know when a revival breaks forth so we are praying and we are asking god for a revival and then you know as we pray for revival we can also exercise the authority that god has given us because we are overcomers right jesus has already overcome the powers of darkness on the cross and we in line with that we are also overcomers so when we are praying for revival we can exercise our authority and you know spiritual we've talked about spiritual warfare how we want to stop the enemy how we want to bind what the enemy is doing and instead of that we want to lose the kingdom of god so we engage in that form of prayer as well so these are all just a few key things okay to pray for revival but i'm sure this list is not complete all right uh, but when we start praying along these lines we can be sure based on god's word based on what we have seen uh, in many of the revivals that you know, these are the keys okay and uh, we can expect god to work in our midst and god to uh, bring forth a revival now sometimes you know uh, even though we are praying for a revival it might take a while and i know of people who have been praying for revivals for uh, you know years decades but they have not been in a revival yet but that doesn't stop them from continuing to pray for a revival so we need a determination to say that god we will not stop praying we haven't seen it but you know we believe that you are going to do it okay so we must not give up sometimes seeing a manifest revival uh, i don't know it it you you've prayed your whole lifetime but you may not have seen it but we need to persevere and trust that god is a god who honors every prayer even if you pray a small simple prayer you know what god holds it close to his heart so people who've prayed for revival you know, they can be many years of prayer but he will honor it even if we don't see it in our lifetime you know for sure we know that god is going to do it and through that uh, souls will come into the kingdom the community will be transformed you know we will see god's power be manifest so that's a little bit about praying for revival i'm just going to stop here and if you have additional thoughts you have additional stories or even questions you know we can uh, go ahead and discuss that all right so yeah feel free you could uh, post uh, these things on the chat or even unmute yourself and ask okay anyone here prayed for revival I think the answer should be uh, yes, right? Everybody, huh. oh, praying. Okay, we are saying praying. Zelitoli, yes. Anita, yes. 
Nikki uh, currently paying for Carvar. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. No, we should because God has asked us uh, to trust His promise. He said the latter rain will be greater than the former. So it's biblical. We can ask for the outpouring of His Spirit. Okay, even Anita says praying for Carvar. Wow, wow, amazing. Praise God. Yeah. So any any questions along these lines? Uh, yeah, I just had uh, one. Uh, I just uh, just out of curiosity, like, were there like? Uh, do you know of any revivals that started in homes? Okay, in homes, is it Divya? Oh yes, like in as a maybe a group, maybe a group of people gathered in a home. Okay. Uh, actually, at the moment, I can't think of any. Uh, it'll be good for you to scan through that book, uh, Revivals, Visitations, and Moves of God, APC Publication from our resource mm -hmm. uh, section. Yeah, it has lots of stories. Okay. Sure, yeah, sure, I'm sure you'll it. find Thank something. You. Yes. OK, OK. OK, uh, Nikki saying, is there a point where we start moving out in faith? And do people just wait to uh, signs like, people coming to church. OK. Uh, so with regard to revival, no, Nikki, I, I think the norm is that we can step out, because that's a, that's a given. Like if you read Mark chapter 16, these signs shall follow those who believe. So we don't have to wait for a revival uh, for us to actually do the, the works of God. So let's go ahead. Let's keep doing, you know, let's keep praying. Let's keep fasting. Let's keep reading the word. Let's keep preaching the word. You know, let's let's keep ministering to people. As a norm, let's do all those normal things. But, you know, when revival happens, you will know. Okay. When revival happens, you will know. Does that answer your question, uh, Nikki? Okay, great, great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I don't know if you all remember, this was uh, maybe 2008. There was uh, a news of the Shillong, Shillong revival uh, in Meghalaya, uh, which, you know, people had stories to, to share about the revival, how churches were being filled and people were worshipping for hours together. Yeah, correct. Correct. So uh, uh, you know that there are there are those um, incidents where when people were worshiping in the churches, they had like supernatural manifestations. Uh, they talked about a bird coming. Uh, you know that there was no bird in that place, and suddenly a bird appeared, and some angelic visitation. So amazing, crazy things happened in that in that revival, and there were um, uh, pictures, there were videos captured, and somebody uh, here in Bangalore, you know, they had made CDs and given those CDs. So even I saw it. You know, you had uh, young people, children. They were all just wailing and crying, and they were just saying, "God, we are sorry." You know, it was just a I have never seen anything like that. You have so many people just crying out to God. And it was as if God was pouring out His Spirit on that community uh, in that period of time. And, uh, you know, there were testimonies coming out, like uh, people who were given to alcohol addiction, they repented, you know, they wanted to stop drinking and all. So, so many stories were coming out of that. And God was doing a marvelous work uh, in that uh, Shillong revival. At least these are the things that I have heard. I've also heard it from a friend of mine who has gone and witnessed the the uh, revival. So you know that's why confidently I can share about it. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure there are other stories as well. Uh, yeah, these stories inspire us. So one of the ways in which 
you can keep yourself fired up to pray for revival is you read of other revival stories and when you see what god has done you know it makes us want it wow god you know do this in our time do this in my life you know do this in my church and my city so i'm just looking at the um, uh Chatia Zelitoli you can read from headhunters to church planters by Paul Hathaway it's a book of amazing spiritual awakening in Nagaland oh thank you uh, uh Zeli that's good no we at least we can read this book that's nice that's about Nagaland and uh, while praying for cities how do we consolidate things to pray for the city things pertaining to the city any suggestions based on your experience uh yeah so consolidate you can do a little bit of research about the city and that will give you uh, the demographics of the city it will give you uh, you know some of the statistics that you want to know you know you can look up the population um a, a little bit of history uh, of the city and all so that is one aspect then uh, you will know how to pray you know based on those things then you would also need you know the current situation and when you're looking at the current situation from news you can get you know information about uh, the economy you can get information about the safety so different aspects you cover different aspects uh, of the current news then after that you know you could also go by god's word we already have you know list of scriptures which apply to every city so you can take those scriptures and you can pray in addition to that you know god releases prophetic words through his people so there can be certain prophetic words that we hold on to and we pray so in this manner you put everything together okay you consolidate everything and keep praying as led by the holy spirit all right till a time where god says okay you know this is done or that is done so in this way you consolidate it and you keep praying uh, does that help divya yeah yes yes pastor uh, also like uh, um like sometimes mm. you know there can be as we learned uh, like there can be some territorial spirits and things like that right uh, sorry i didn't get you there can be uh can you hear yeah only one word in between yeah, i just said like there could be territorial spirits right over uh, yeah over places so yes uh, yes yes so like how, how do we get an understanding of such things mm -hmm. yeah so for territorial spirits uh, no divya we can we can uh see there's both the natural and the spiritual so in the natural you can observe you might find that there are um uh, you know some activities that are abnormal so if you find i think we've discussed this no uh, some places you see there's a lot of addiction prostitution corruption and you can kind of uh, notice that it is is quite um you know uh, prevalent it's and uh, it's spreading across it's touching many communities in the city so you can understand that something like this uh, cannot be you know just happening it has to have a spiritual um, influence behind it so you observe but you also pray when you pray god will god will put that on your heart and say okay you know uh, in this region you have a spirit of lust okay which is causing people to engage in prostitution or causing or a spirit of addiction uh, of bondage which is causing people to uh, you know uh, go into uh, things like this so both are required you observe and you also hear from god and god will help you discern that these territorial spirits are at work in that place okay okay thank you yeah thank yeah you. uh but one uh, question uh, don't get too absorbed in that divya uh, because what happens is you know people uh it's like an unhealthy 
they get very attached to uh, these territorial spirits and those territorial spirits and then you know your focus goes more demon spirits god and it yeah yeah got it yeah understood yeah yeah so I, yeah oh, okay sure 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 yeah great great okay i'll just look at the chat here um let's judge one all right so those are the only questions here uh, and uh, close with the word prayer okay all right so uh, let's close with prayer and i just want to encourage you i know i share like bits and pieces not in a very systematic way today uh, but you know inspiring stories from that revivals visitations and moves of god uh, please do read that book you know when you have some time and uh, that will give you great insight into revivals and praying for revivals so would like to request uh, someone to please pray maybe zeli because john started with prayer Maybe you can close with prayer. Yes, Mr. Yes, Let's pray. Yeah. Father God, we want to thank you so much for this awesome time. We thank you so much, Lord, whatever we have learned in this session, Lord, about revivals, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, continue on to uh, inspire us, continue on to speak to us so that we have a heart for revival, that we will never cease to pray that our hearts will be focused on you. Lord, we thank you so much for this time, Lord. You bless our pastor and bless each one of us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I have posted your uh, second assignment. Uh, you, you can start working on it. I know you, you would uh, ask me, oh, where are the assignments? I'll hand it to you, okay? Uh, okay, sign.